some out there, they can simply listen to Morse code on the computer and translate it straight away in their head. Unfortunately, I'm not one of those people. So this is how I decoded my Morse. It may sound obvious, but you are going to have to record your gameplay. Whether that be on PC, Xbox, PlayStation, they've all got their own methods of recording. I'm not going to go into that, I'm sure you know how to do that already. On screen now is my gameplay of me laying at the bottom of the radio tower on the Albion map, listening to the Morse code. The program I use is called Audacity. It's free for both PC and Mac users, and I will include a link in the description below. So this is what Audacity looks like when you first open it up. Before we get started though, I'd like to recommend something about your game video. Firstly, goes without question, you really need to be in an empty server. Too many people running around shooting or trying to knife you, just won't go down too well. Also, if you open up the server brand new and there's like a sandstorm or a blizzard going on, there's gonna be a lot of noise. So my recommendation is there is just simply quit out the server, open up a fresh one, and hopefully it's uh, a more peaceful environment for you to record your audio in. But how do you get your gaming video clip into Audacity? Now, I've watched a few YouTube videos on this. Some say convert to MP3, some say convert to a WAV file. I don't fully understand why, and if you do, please feel free to leave a comment as to why they do it, but I simply drag the video file straight into Audacity itself. Now I use an Xbox, and all my videos end up as mp4 format so i don't know if they're using a different recorder um, they get different formats that audacity doesn't recognize i don't know but for me i'm going to simply drag in the mp4 file that i recorded on my xbox so let's import this file two methods that i know of you can either go up to the top here to file click open and then browse through and find the file that you want or well, the other method you can simply if you know where it is or it's conveniently located say on your desktop or downloads folder like I have you just simply grab the file and drop it on the screen and your file is now in audacity what do we do with it now we've got it in as you can see there's just a blue squiggly line which doesn't mean anything to anyone first thing I'm going to do come down here and I'm going to drag the window down to make it bigger. But it still doesn't really mean anything, does it? So what we're going to do is kind of go across to the left hand side of this little border, click the little arrow. I'm going to change this waveform to spectrogram. Now this little red line here, the dots and the dashes, is your actual Morse code. On both tracks here but it's still quite small so what we're going to do here is we're going to zoom in a little bit so we can now see it a bit clearer with the Morse code that I've recorded I was very very lucky and you can quite clearly see a larger gap here than you can between the individual dots and dashes here and between each individual letter here if you still can't see it very clearly one of the things I've learned come down here to start and length of selection and that's what we need it set into I think it's normally set as default there but set it to start and length of selection come down to the frames area down to this code here normally it's set at seconds but I find that quite difficult to use so what I do is I set mine to frames and now if I highlight the gaps so this is where I believe the beginning of the Morse is. I've got 12 frames. Between each individual character, I've got one frame there, maybe two. And between each individual letter, I've got four frames. So this is definitely the beginning of my Morse code here. So that's what we're going to go for. I personally found decoding this string of five letters more difficult than a coherent sentence. That's because with five letters, you don't actually know where it starts. So doing what I've just told you here, by trying to find that bigger gap, that's how you do it. If you've got a sentence, it's much easier because as you're typing out, typing in the Morse code, the sentence is appearing and you're reading the letters in your own language underneath. 
So you can see when the st sentence starts to repeat itself. So therefore you know you've got it. The five letters, yeah, I found it a little bit, a little bit harder. Because we've already decided where the Morse starts, what I'm going to do is move my cursor just before the first dash. I'm going to put a marker there. And I'm just going to scroll across to the right. So that I can see all the letters appearing across here. As I said earlier, I think that this Morse code is quite clear. So if you come down to the bottom here, where my cursor is, you can quite clearly see that that's a dash, that's a dot, that's a dot, dot, then there's a gap between the, the letters. This is a single dot on its own, then another gap, then dash, dot, dot. And you can either write this down on a scrap piece of paper and go to the many Morse conversion sites out there. I'll include some links below to the two sites that I mainly use, or you can simply type it directly into there. This is the site I'm going to be using today. But at the minute, you have to flip between the two screens all the time, so I'm not too happy with that. So I'm going to come up the top, and I am going to put these two windows side by side. The reason I like this site is because when you put them together side by side like this, it's a nice, clean, crisp picture. So as I said, we've got a dash and three dots. So simply go up to input data and type it in. Dash dot dot dot. Then we have a space. We have a dot, space, then dash and two dots, then another dot. And then we have dot dot dash dot. And we get the answer B E D E F which is actually the correct translation for this Morse code. But say your Morse is not as easy to code as mine. So here's a few little tips that I've picked up by simply playing with the program. Come across here to the left margin again, click open the menu, and go into the spectrogram settings itself. That will open up this window. For now, we'll just shift it out of the way over here. One of the things I've played with is the range DB. So just highlight that and for now we're going to hit just half it. So I'm going to type in 40. Instead of hitting OK though, I want to have a quick look at it first. So I'm going to hit preview. That's pretty good already. Um, if you get the numbers wrong, don't worry about it. Say for example you typed in 20 and you end up with a completely blank screen like this. It's not to worry. You just keep playing with these numbers until you get something that you quite like. Another thing to make it a bit clearer I've used is I use the grayscale feature. So just put a little tick in the box, hit preview, and that's even clearer. So if we move this back out of the way, our original we had a dash and three dots, and you can see here quite clearly, even clearer than before, the dash and three dots. Obviously, if your Morse is readable at the beginning, you don't need to play with the settings. But if it's a bit dodgy, then yeah. So we'll just click OK on that. That's now saved that feature as it is. And you could obviously decode that quite easily now, I feel, especially using this website. My name is Jonah. I hope you found this video informative and useful and now feel confident enough to be able to go out and decode your own Morse. If you like the video, please leave a like. Uh, and consider subscribing. Thanks.